what's up YouTube? It's Brian House here for Housework and today we are going to be completely disassembling and dissecting the 2x72 belt grinder build that I've been working on for the last couple of months. I realized after going back and kind of watching that playlist of me constructing and designing this thing that we didn't actually have a whole lot of discussion as to the mechanics and the technicalities that go into building something like this. Ultimately, the goal for this build was to construct a 2x72 grinder that had all of the features of a very modern sort of manufactured grinder that you could build at home with rudimentary tools with easy to access steel. And I think we've achieved that here. So the goals for today are going to be completely tear this thing down, all nuts and bolts from the top down, discuss each individual component, how I constructed it and designed it, and how you can build your own. Also, I need to finish the welds. The welds in this thing are really just tack welds at this point. I've been using it for the last couple of months, just tack together, and I think I need to be responsible and just finish my welds. And also, I need to photograph each individual component because I am finishing up the 2x72 plans so you can buy those plans from me and build your own, but I really need individual photos of each piece so that that can go into the plan set so you know what I'm talking about. Okay, we're gonna start from the top down. The most complicated component of this really is the tracking system. And this particular tracking wheel is, uh, was purchased on eBay from Origin Blade Makers out in Oregon. Uh, it's a very rudimentary sort of simple system once you break it down. The, hinging component of it is pretty easy to understand. It's basically just two pieces of steel that hinge on each other. But we're gonna take it apart and take a look at it and see exactly what's going on. The diameter of this wheel is three inches. I have it mounted with a 3 8 inch by one inch bolt up here and a couple of lock washers, actually just one lock washer. And it's really tight at the moment. I don't use Loctite or anything because sometimes I want to be able to adjust this. But I'm take this out, unthread it. All right, it comes out. A couple of washers and a lock washer there. And here's just the one inch, three eighths Allen bolt. This is a one and a half inch by one and a half inch piece of tube steel. I cut these with just a cheap cutoff wheel from Harbor Freight. Nothing complicated here. It really is just a piece of tube steel with a hole in it for the fulcrum bolt. This particular fulcrum bolt is three inches by three eighths of an inch thread. And the mechanism here that I've created for the tracking arm is just a, a bolt, a simple, three eighths inch bolt this is three and a quarter and it threads all the way through and when I drilled this hole I actually drilled it so that it would go all the way through and it would thread and tap all the way through okay and what that does is it allows this particular wheel to sit here and it pushes this arm up and down so if you thread this out and this is affixed this particular tracking mechanism will go up and down using this dial right here. I got creative because I didn't have a knob and I welded an old wrench onto the nut so that it actually makes this kind of easier to turn. You can do whatever you want. They actually sell knobs for this kind of thing with a 3 8 inch bolt. That's as simple as that. I mean, it really isn't much more to it. I put an extra nut on there just in case if I'm doing something that's creating a lot of vibration. You can actually tighten it down. That nut will, will uh, create a little bit more tension to keep this in place. As of right now, I haven't really needed it. It's been okay. You know, everything's been good. So, so yeah, this is a 3 8 inch, 16 coarse threaded bolt with a wrench welded to the top. And it goes into a threaded cavity here that goes all the way through. Pretty straightforward, pretty simple. Show you how simple this is to put back together. Makes it easy when you buy it from Origin Blade Maker on eBay because this hole up top drilled and threaded that. 
I actually drilled a hole here on top of this to make this fit so that I had the sort of floating tracking mechanism that I wanted and we talked a lot about that in the tuning video if you haven't watched the tuning your 2x72 grinder video this particular hole makes that happen you could do it with these two slots right here as well these two slots would allow you to drill two different holes and a couple of people uh, have commented in and said hey if you had two bolts there you know you'd have a little bit more flexibility um, I kind of went the lazy route just did one bolt and it seems to work fine for me but uh, but yeah so let me show you how simple it is to it attach this and lock it into place and this gives you the fine tuning that you really want to have with a floating tracking mechanism I made a small little notch mark on the front of the steel there that way I can line it all back up because just a minute adjustment to this really does make an enormous difference. When you buy this particular tracking wheel from Origin Blade Makers on eBay, and I'll include links down in the description so you can click through and find this exact one, it comes pretty much assembled just like this. Uh, I did modify here with a spacer, a little half inch nylon spacer just to move this wheel on the axle a little bit. You basically buy it and it's, uh, you know, it's a turnkey installation. I like the way this is constructed because if you use all 3 8 inch 16 bolts, you really only need one tap to make all of this work. I love that. Simplicity. All right, let's take a quick minute and talk about the spring I used. Uh, you'll see here I have two holes drilled here. I originally thought I was going to need two of these springs, but I only really needed one. And this particular spring I just bought in the hardware section at Home Depot. Ace Hardware sells them, Lowe's sells them. It's a very standard, I think, bed spring. I don't really know what they're called. I'll try to find it on their website and create a link to it. Uh, it's a, just a standard spring, and it turned out to be just the right amount of tension. Now, this fulcrum bolt is exactly three inches away from the end. So you can kind of see here, if you, if you were to shift this one way or the other, you get a little bit more leverage. I got lucky, I think, when I designed this thing that uh, the tensioning was pretty much spot on. So uh, yeah, it worked out. Spring was probably $2. The tensioning arm here is exactly nine inches long. The inner wall is 0.25, that's a quarter of an inch. And the reason I went that route was because I'm gonna be drilling and tapping into this steel. I've had a couple of people comment and write me emails to talk about how heavy it is. Well, there are reasons for a lot of that. And some people say, well, you don't need 0.25 inch wall steel. You could go with another type of steel, a thinner wall, like say 0.187 and get away with the same amount of uh, strength and it would be lighter. I totally agree with you, but when you go to drill and tap into that steel, you don't have as many threads. So now you're welding on nuts and bolts to the outside of these arms to make that fit and work. And honestly, the cost comparison was so minuscule to get 0.25 inch wall tube steel. This just made sense. And I've got one more reason as to why 0.25 wall steel is important, especially for the receiver tubes. If you buy 0.25 wall steel, a one and a half inch by one and a half inch piece of tube steel fits perfectly into the cavity of a two by two. If you grind out the weld on the inside, it takes you about five to 10 minutes with a file. It's a little bit of a headache. You break a sweat while doing it, but it fits in there really nicely. And as you can see, there's no play. What I've seen in some of these other designs is when people use uh, 0.187 wall steel, they've got a lot of slop inside of that receiver tube. Now you're trying to make those adjustments with uh, shims and other things to keep these tooling arms from shifting around. And if you've watched my tuning video, you'll know that just a small minute change in the angle against the drive wheel up front, it causes tracking problems. So if you go with my design with 0.25 wall steel, you're eliminating all of that tuning. And every time you do a tooling change, you're gonna thank me because you're gonna say, it slides right in, it locks in place, I don't have to mess with it. Let's take it apart so we can see how it's constructed.
The bolt is just a standard two and three quarters inch, three eighths inch bolt, just a standard nut and bolt. Probably do you good to put a lock washer on there or something. I don't have that currently. But yeah, you can see this is a very simple setup. Nine inch piece of tube steel, a couple of holes drilled in it. The fulcrum bolt there, a little bit lower. It's not set on center. And the reason is, is it, it allows this, this arm to, to tilt just properly. Plus I wanted the holes in the tensioning pillar to be a bit lower down so that they weren't as close to the top of this particular bracket here. So if it sits down like that, it's a little bit more stable. You got a little bit more meat up here. I would probably not have this notch as high. It's not as necessary. I, I could probably lose maybe a quarter inch from that notch because you're never going to have it down like that. You're never going to have that arm set like that. Let's talk a little bit about the tensioning pillar. Tensioning pillar is a two inch by two inch piece of 0.25 wall tube steel. It is at a 60 degree angle from the receiver tubes. So how I do this is I set it to zero and it looks like it's pretty much already there. And then we put it up on the wall to just kind of see where we're at. And we're at 59.82, which is pretty dang close to 60 degrees. Eight inches long. The drop down here is two and a half inches. But like I said, I think you could get away with two and a quarter on that top notch and the back notch is one and a half inches and this is pretty much perfect. Now the cutoff from this piece up here, I just used down here to create the spring tensioner bracket, which is a pretty simple piece of steel that's just welded in so that it sits level with the, the base and then it's got a hole in it to hold the spring. Okay, so now let's move on to the drivetrain. Really quickly, I wanted to discuss what motor I use and what VFD I use. This is a two horsepower, three phase AC motor made by a company called Iron Horse. I get it from a company called Automation Direct. There are many options out there as far as AC motors go. This is the one I chose. At the time of purchasing this, I paid $162 out the door for it, shipped to my front door, second day air. And I thought, you know what, that's a great deal. After my DC motor blew up, I went the whole AC route in the VFD. It's cheap as far as the motor goes, but the VFD itself is a little bit expensive. You're probably looking at 350 to 375 for a decent VFD. So I threw a little bit of money at it and uh, yeah, here we are. But I'm really happy with the motor overall. It's quiet. That's a big uh, plus. It's not very loud. In fact, the, the, the belt running over the platen is louder than the motor itself. If I turn this thing on and went full speed, you'd be surprised at how quiet it is. The drive wheel is a 7-inch drive wheel. I got it from Ameribraid Corporation off of eBay. Ameribraid actually makes 2x72 grinders, by the way. I didn't know that after I bought this. Um, I kind of dug down into their store and saw that they have a, they have a cool um, 2x72 grinder and they have a whole bunch of options for it and stuff. The reason I went 7 inches is because somebody who comments on my channel all the time, Nottis Nottis, he says, you know, that's a great grinder and all, but you get that 4-inch drive wheel. It would be really great if you doubled it and you got some serious RPMs. And uh, he was absolutely right. The, by going to a 7-inch drive wheel, what I found was uh, I don't use it that often. I don't turn it all the way up to 100, but boy, when I do and I need to grind something, this thing is an absolute powerhouse. I mean, I can't tell you. It chews through half-inch plate. It's unbelievable what this thing is capable of doing. So I went ahead and spent a little bit of extra money and went with the 7-inch drive wheel. 5 8 inch arbor on the, uh, the, the spindle here on this particular motor. I'll put links down in the description so you can find one and buy one for your grinder. It's very worth doing. It's one of those things that I'm glad I did. Let's just pull this drive wheel off. Nice, big, heavy piece of aluminum. All right, since we're talking about drivetrain and motors, let's just pull the motor right off the plate and discuss briefly as to why I went this particular route. The plate is 3 8 inch steel. Cut it with a cutoff wheel. Had to transfer the holes for the motor itself. 
to the plate using a piece of paper and just a stencil. That worked out pretty good. My advice to you is, if you're gonna do it that way, only drill one or two holes at a time. You know, don't go crazy and uh, drill all four because I did that and um, you know what, it didn't work out. I ended up having to fill them and drill them again. The hole here was cut out for the, the motor itself. There's just a little bit of a recess here. It was cut out using a four and a half inch hole saw that I got on Amazon. And this did a really great job. It was loud, it was the worst sound I've ever heard in my entire life, but it did a fantastic job. Again, these bolts are 3 8 inch 16. We're gonna take this, tilt it on its side, and drop the motor. Got some set screws here that hold the tooling arms in place. 3 8 inch here, 5 16 up here, and the reason I went with 5 16 is it's what I had. I probably would go with 3 8 in the future. Take the tooling arm out for the platen. All right, this is the main body of the grinder here. You can see its simplicity. It's a pretty straightforward piece of equipment. The plate here for the motor plate, 3 8 inch steel. I drilled six plugs for plug welds here. And again, it's just tacked in place in the bottom and the back here. Uh, the plate itself, you know, for your motor will be just slightly different. So when you get the plans for this, it's gonna be something you're gonna wanna modify to meet your own needs. The tilting mechanism is of my own design. The hinges were made out of 3 8 inch steel. Again, I'm going with a theme here. Simplicity, simplicity, simplicity. These hinges are the same steel as the plate that holds the motor. The receiver tube, tube steel, is the same as the tensioning pillar. You can see I'm going for simplicity here, so when you go to buy your steel, you actually don't have to go searching for all different kinds of sizes and things. Uh, the, this particular hinge system here is pretty straightforward. It's four hinges. Uh, two of them have channels in them for locking mechanisms. After I built this though, it was really clear that I only really needed one bolt in here that would lock this thing in place. The way that this is weighted and designed, it, its home position is in the vertical position. So if this is loose, it actually wants to fall back that way. So you, you know, you really want to lock it in place whenever you're using it, but it really wants to live like this. This bolt is a nine and a half inch, three quarter, 10 bolt from McMaster car. Uh, I will have these in stock. This is uh, pretty important. You can't really find these in a hardware store. The receiver tubes are nine inches long exactly. They're both the same. And again, you need to file the weld out of the inside of this in order to allow the tooling arm to slide in. Wanted to point out too, there are bushings inside of here that are between the pillars and the hinges themselves. That was a tip, another tip from Nottis Nottis. Thank you so much for suggesting that because that makes a huge difference when uh, you're turning this thing. It just feels nice and sturdy. Um, also, when you're fabricating it, uh, you're, you're gonna have those bushings inside of there when you bolt this all up. And how I did it was using threaded rod, put it all together and held it in one place so that when I actually welded it, those bushings were inside and uh, created the clearance for them. That was pretty important. You know, when you're, when you're talking about turning this thing uh, a few hundred times a year or maybe more, you really want to have the bushing wear out and not the hinge. The locking mechanism is just a standard 3 8 16 bolt and it was tapped into the pillar itself. Very simple design. And here are the bushings we were talking about. It's one big mamma jamma bolt and a lock nut on the end. The risers or pillars are 2x2 two two tube steel. Very same exact kind of design as before. They are 
made this way because they're, they support about 50% of the weight of the grinder head itself, you know, so I didn't want to use thin steel here. I want a nice heavy steel, plus you just buy a 48 inch stick of 2x2 two two and that will build this entire grinder. The tensioning pillars are 9 inches long, the hole drilled here all the way through 3 quarters of an inch, and you can see that we've ground down the corner here to allow the tilting mechanism to actually function. If you didn't grind this edge down, the the, the hinge and the entire grinder head would actually stop. It wouldn't be able to turn. The base plate is 10 inches by 10 inches and again made with 3 8 inch thick plate steel. All right, let's real quick go over the platen. The wheels are 2 inch diameter from Origin Blade Makers out in Oregon, same company that sold me the tracking wheel. We bought those on eBay. I'll put a link down in the description so you can find them. The platen arm is made out of one and a half inch by one and a half inch tube steel. It's uh, exactly the same stuff that makes the tensioning arm on the top. So very simple to build. Let's quick take it apart so you can check it out. Three eighths of an inch knob. Again, this bolt is threaded all the way through, all right? And that's just for rigidity. I've got it threaded all the way through, tapped all the way through the arm. 3 8 inch 16. 3 8 of an inch 16 bolt. And there is a small spacer. It's about 3 quarters of an inch that goes between the platen face and the tooling arm. And that's just to line everything up for the tracking. The platen face is 3 8 of an inch plate steel. And this is um, was cut using just a standard angle grinder and a cutoff wheel, and then milled the channel out, which is totally optional. Don't have to have that. The actual platen itself, you could probably make this out of any kind of angle iron or anything. You really just need to make a bracket that would hold this piece of hardened steel, which is actually the platen itself, out towards the front of the grinder. In my case, I used a piece of 2 by 3 tube steel, cut it down, and created this little bracket here. It works out. I tapped into the platen face so I could mount the screws directly into it. That way it's somewhat adjustable. Now that I have this thing all taken apart, I'm going to go ahead and finish my welds and clean up my welds off of camera and get it ready for paint. I'm actually considering possibly powder coating it if I can figure that whole thing out. If I didn't answer any of your questions in regards to the 2x72 bell grinder prototype, uh, go ahead and leave me a comment down below. I do read and respond to all of them as long as they are productive. Also, if you're interested in finding the plans for this, there are links down in the description that'll take you to my website. You can fill out a form and get those plans. There are links down in the description that will take you to my Amazon store. Everything you see right here in my workshop is in there. It's categorized down for ease of use from my personal safety equipment, from my mill to my air compressor. Basically everything I use is available right there in my Amazon store. That's a free way to support my channel. If you click through those links and you buy something, I get a small commission. Now, if you want to take your support to the next level, I do have a Patreon page now for as little as $1 a month. You can support everything I've got going on right here in my workshop. If you don't want to use Patreon, there's a great way to give me a one-off donation, and that's through the Buy Me A Coffee link. I love coffee. Also, I do have t-shirts and merch available now through Teespring. If you look right below this video, you'll see links there. If you want to sport a cool housework shirt or a hoodie or something, that's another way to support my channel. As always, guys, it was a blast hanging out with you here in my workshop. I hope to see you in the next video. My name is Brian House, and this has been Housework. <laughs>